pride or race community. In time of release, then I will talk about the subjects of the association's case. So, when we start with the definition, here are the literature that you can uh, use, that you can take it from this time. So, first, the notation. Now, I use capital letters for relations, and I use star to denote the transpose relation, and this is the difference uh, with uh, Akihira. Yeah, by the way, I, I want to say that uh, with Akihira, we try to uh, make our notation as close as possible, but uh, sometimes it's different. And um, you see this already in that example that uh, a star is what was denoted by the transpose. So the relation is symmetric if it is symmetric, okay? So if, if it equals to the star, it's anti symmetric if the intersection is empty set. Uh, so as alpha is the set of all neighbors of alpha. So if you think about binary relation as a diagram, and if you depicture it, so S alpha is this, you take the points, you take all the neighbors, and this is S of alpha. Now, um, projection is quite natural thing. You, you have pairs, you project on the first coordinate, on the second coordinate, you get a certain subset. Now, the product of relation is a usual product of transitive projection. So, is also well known thing. Uh, here, every permutation is considered as a binary relation, right? And if I if I take if I take the neighbors of a point, there will be just one uh, element, and, and this element is denoted like in the Akihira talk. Uh, alpha to G. So, and G stars. So, now about partitions. Um, so, in this way, I write that this is the partition of omega. So, partition here is unordered, but if I want to stress that I have a partition with a linear order, I, I put here a narrow. So, here, uh, that means that C is a refinement of P. So, so if, if this is C, right, then if I take if I take a refinement of P, then I write this way. Right. So this gives us two latest uh, operations on the set of all partitions. So join and meet. But here the meaning is an opposite to a usual one. So if you take uh, the join of two partitions here, means that you have to take intersection of all classes. And the meet here means you have to take a, a union of classes which are common to both partitions. So this denotes set of all unions and well. This is now the definition of the linear configuration. So first I define what uh, Hickman calls rainbow. So rainbow, you may you may think about a rainbow as a coloring of a complete graph. And a complete graph is directed. So you can color the two arcs which are opposite one to to another by a different colors. So this is possible. And the rainbow is a coloring which satisfies two conditions. So you cannot use the same color for uh, diagonal pairs and all diagonal pairs. So the diagonal pairs should be of different colors than all diagonal. This is the first. And the second, if you have two arcs of the same color, say green, then the opposite arc 
should have the same color, but not necessarily green, maybe it could be red. Right? So this is called rainbow, and you can uh, build many rainbows, and actually you can, you can count how many rainbows you, you can build. But here is the most uh, important condition of regularity, so it introduces the intersection number. So what do we require here? So I have a coloring of my arts, and then I take three colors, three relations, okay, R and C. I take any pair from T, what is the alpha beta, right? Alpha beta R related by T, and now I count the triangles. The triangles is colored by R and S. So, and it is required that the number of these triangles does not depend on the choice of this pair, it depends only on the color of this pair. And if this condition is satisfied, then it's called the unit configuration. This number is called uh, the intersection number. The number of points is called the order of the configuration, or the degree of the configuration, and the number of colors, the number of masses in the partition, is called the red of the configuration. Uh, so if you take a relation, then you can build a graph, and this graph, uh, actually a diagram, and this diagram is called the basic diagram. So then you have basic relations, and you have just relations, which are union of basic relations. And uh, now the question is how can you define the uh, community configuration? So one way is to give uh, pictures of the basic graph. So here we have a coherent configuration of what is three with uh, five uh, with five colors, right? And uh, you can easily share that this is a rainbow because the colors for diagonal and non-diagonal pairs are different. And if two arcs have the same color, then the opposite arcs also have the same color. But if you want to check the regularity condition, then actually you have to count all these possible triangles. And there is one way to do that and in a more easy way for humans. I mean, if you, if you just like the program, then check all the possible triangles. But if you want to check it by hand, you can do the following. You can build what is called the adjacent symmetries. Let's see what happens. 
Now, uh, so there have to be hundreds of communications, and, and the variables do not commute. Okay, so we multiply. So here we have p squared plus ag plus m squared, right? Then we get dp plus eh plus fe. And now we get df plus eg plus fd. And now GD plus HG plus GF, right? structure constants. For example, if you want to know what is the structure constants, uh, let's say D, D, E, F, right? Then you look at the place F in the product and you look at the coefficient of D, E here and you see D, E is not here, right? So that means it's zero. And and you see here too, that means the corresponding structure uh, and, and intersection number uh, G E H is equal to 2, right? So you may consider this matrix as a generating function for, for the intersection numbers, right? So this is the way how you can uh, check whether your coloring or your partition is a uh, configuration, right? So, now let's... You said, I have first, can you just explain that just a little bit again for me? Uh, so for how do you, what do you actually do to, to calculate that coefficient D, E, F? Oh, okay. So, if, if you want, if you want P, E, F, right? You have to take the entry where F is, right? And you have to look at the same entry in the product. So according, uh, according to uh, 
the definition of coherent configuration, it doesn't matter where you take this f in which position, because the expression should be the same, right? So now, now you see, for example, here you see df. That means that the structure code, the, the intersection numbers, this one is one, right? And the intersection number E G F is one two. But if you see, if you don't see here some pair, that means the intersection number is zero. So that's uh, yeah. But of course, if you, if you write a program, you will not use the same this way. Um, okay, now some uh, theory. Uh, let me let me go back. If you look at the at the slide, you can see that uh, you have you have three loops, and on the loops you have two cards. So that means you get a partition of the point set into two subsets. One three and one is a single point. And these what are called fibers. So what does it mean? You have a set of relations and you require that the yellow uh, pairs have a different colors from, from other pairs. That means if you take if you take the complete diagonal, this complete diagonal will be a union of the uh, colored classes from our partition. So that means this will induce the partition of the points. And this partition of the points and the classes of these partitions are called fibers. They are called fibers of a coherent configuration. So, more formally, a, a, a subset of a point set is called a fiber if the each diagonal relation is one of our classes. Right. Not the union, but just one of them. And the configuration is called homogeneous if we have just one fiber. So, uh, in the example you have seen before, it's inhomogeneous configuration. It has just, it has two fibers. But let me show you a very simple example of a configuration which has just one fiber. And this is a circular one, a cyclic one. So I write it's uh, in the form of the Jesson symmetries. And you can easily check that if you square the square this, and if you take the partition according to the rule that two elements are in the same class, only if the expressions are equal, you will get the same partition. So, and this is example of a homogeneous configuration for an association scheme. It has a rank sweep. Now, some properties which are almost needed from the definition. So, the first one says if you take all possible unions, then of course it's, this set is gross with respect to all the women of the world. Now, you have also this property which follows from the definition of a coherent configuration because omega square is union of all classes. And this one, as we already discussed, is here of the of the elements corresponding to the fibers. And it's also goes with, with respect to relation. Now uh, the set omega is a union of fibers, this joint union of fibers, we already have seen that. Now this is important if I take if I take any, any basic relation from my configuration and I project on the first coordinate and the second coordinate, I always get a fiber. Maybe, maybe they will be different fibers. 
That means if, if this is a partition of my ground set into fibers, every relation is either between two fibers, right, or inside one fiber. Okay, let me let me show an uh, outline of the proof. So let us take let us take a, a relation S here. Now if if I multiply S as a relation with a transpose one, then what I will get on the diagonal? On the diagonal, I will get all the points from the projection of the first component, right? So it contains the diagonal of the projection of the first component, right? But, but we know that uh, on the diagonal, we have the diagonal now, so that means this one is a union of some uh, of some fibers. Okay. Then what you have to show that you cannot have just uh, uh, two fibers. Well, if you if you if you have here more than one fiber, then if you take This product, right? So if you if you have here more than one fiber, let's say two or more, so when you take this product, you will get a proper subset. So it will be not equal. It will be a proper subset, not equal. But it cannot be because it's a basic relation. So our set of relations is closed with respect to multiplication of relations, right? So we can get something which is smaller than a, a class of our partition. So in this way you can, uh, you can prove that the projection of, on, on the first coordinate and on the second coordinate should be a Now, the second thing, if you, if you look at the structure constant here, Where T is the diagonal relation, it should be the same. But what is this structure constant? What does it count? It counts actually the number of neighbors of a point alpha. So if you if this is a projection, let's say the, the left fiber and the right fiber. So we take the point alpha, and then you look how many neighbors you have here. Then the structure constant you see there, it is exactly this number because it counts the number of triangles where the basis has two equal points. Right. So that means that our graph is uh, regular, so from any point we have the same number, uh, the same number of neighbors, which may be in a different fiber, but maybe also in the same fiber. And this number is called the velocity, the velocity of the graph. So, if I take all the relations which are inside one fiber and forget about the rest. I will get the homogeneous union configuration, and uh, which is from the uh, uh, homogeneous constitution. So here are exercises that you will solve uh, tomorrow. So, uh, uh, we need this triangle property somewhere, and let me let me tell a few words about this because uh, at certain point I need this. So this triangle property means that 
you have variables of the time R, S, and T. So if you look at the coloring of a complete graph, you can count the number of triangles where the uh, where the edges are colored by R, S, and T. So you can color, you can count this in to three different way, uh, ways. You can fix with this color and then count how many points you have here uh, related by R and S. So you will get the first number. Or you can fix this point and, and then you can color how many triangles you have uh, or how many points you have which are related to this one while R and while T and S and so forth. So if you if you write this down you will get this uh, equality. Okay, so uh, because we have um, fibers we get uh, what is called the fiber decomposition. So we know every relation is either inside one fiber or is it between two fibers, right? So uh, now we can uh, split a split the set of uh, of all uh, classes into those which are between the fibers, right? So and then we get then we get uh, sorry, yeah. Then we get that the whole set of relations is the joint union of the relations between two fixed fibers, right? And, and this union is a feature. Now, it's straightforward to see from the definition of a continuum configuration that if you take just uh, some part of the fibers, not all of them, one fiber, two fibers, or ten fibers, and just take relations between them, you will still get a coherent configuration. And it's called uh, sometimes truncation or a restriction. Now, another thing uh, I want to define that will be needed is a direct sum of coherent configurations. This is a very uh, simple thing. So you have two coherent configurations with disjoint points. So here is omega, right? And omega is one in shape of others. And here is another one in omega drawing. And the domain of time is divided into fibers. Now, inside the omega, the omega prime, we have the same relations as R in the coherent configurations. Now, we have to define the relation between them. Now, between them, we do the following. So, we take any fiber from here, any fiber from here, right, and just say, take all pairs between them. So, it's a Complete by the graph. So we get this and the opposite one. Okay. So this is called the uh, let me give an example. Let me give an example. So uh, let's take a coherent configuration with one fiber or two points. So uh, omega is one, two, and the coloring is this one. Okay. We have two colors. The can is which other, it's a homogeneous coherent configuration. Right? And let's take the same one, let's take the omega prime, the one prime, two prime, and you get x prime, y prime, y prime, x prime. Okay. Now, how do we build the direct sum 
Okay, you have one fiber here and one fiber here, so you will have just one relation from here to here and then backwards. So that means your adjacency matrix of the configuration will be this. Just copy those. Here you put some other variable, and here you put some other variable. So this is an adjacency matrix of all the other sign. Configuration is too long. Now, I suppose this is going to be in the configuration. When you define some of the object, you want to know what is it in the day of the same. Well, the answer is that, so you have a um, coloring code, one complete draft, and you have another coloring code for uh, the second complete draft. And isomorphism means you can find a bijection between, between the points and between the colors which agree. Uh, and, and that means uh, what is written here. If alpha, beta are colored by certain C, then their images should be colored by the image of, of this uh, color C. In fact, in fact, this uh, if if the bijection is given, then the phi is uniquely determined by F. So uh, actually, you can uh, you need only F in order to. Uh, find whether they are as more. Now, um, they set up all isomorphism from a uh, from, uh, coherent configuration to itself is denoted in this way. And here is the set of, of all automorphisms. And, and people from algebra usually uh, uh, ask, why is that? I mean, usually in algebra, isomorphism, mm -hmm. a, a, an automorphism of an object is an isomorphism from the object itself. Uh, and, and this is everywhere, but here it's different because historically, this group was determined earlier, right? And only after some number of years, people, people realized that actually. Uh, isomorphisms from the configuration to itself, they also can interchange the colors. For example, for example, if I take, let us look, let us look at the automorphism group uh, of this configuration. So we have here two fibers, right? And the automorphism cannot change the fibers, so you match inside the fiber. And you can easily check that the automorphism group of this configuration is a direct sum in the sense of permutation groups of two symmetric groups and two points. So it's as extra group is, is, is a direct product, but the action is a direct sum. This is the automorphism group. But if you take all isomorphisms, then you also are allowed to exchange the fibers. So you will accept this group by S2. So you will get, if um, I'm correct, a, a, a risk group. So this will be the isomorphism group. So it's bigger than this one. And uh, you can always um, say that the automorphism group is a normal sample of the isomorphism group. Now, uh, let, me, let me give some more particular examples of the coherent configurations. So, what is the minimum number of colors that we could have? We know that the diagonal and not the diagonal should have different colors. So the minimum number of colors is two. So this is a trivial 
material configuration, which has just uh, the diagonal and everything outside of the diagonal. Okay. So we have three. Now, and this is the minimal element in the lattice of uh, of Cartesian uh, configuration. Now, you also have discrete. Discrete is uh, the situation when every every arm has a different color. Has a different color. So, so your color classes. Contain only one element. So it's from the discrete, and this is the maximum element in the lattice of the computer. So this has rank 2, and this has rank n square of 1. This has rank 2. This has rank 2. So the first interesting case starts when it has rank 3, right? So what can we say if our configuration has rank 3? Well, and here is an example of such a configuration. So I take an undirected graph. So uh, no use, no multiple edges. And the graph is called strongly regular if the 3 Car crosses the diagonal, the graph is stuck, and we calculate if this is a coherent configuration. Okay, what does it mean? So, first of all, we have one fiber. If we have one fiber, we know that between fibers our relations are regular. When we have one fiber, so this graph, this relation is inside the fiber, so it's a regular graph. It's a regular graph. That means it has certain balance, let's call it K. Yeah, so this uh, is the structure constant. If I call this, say, S0, S1, and S2. And if I use for structure constants, uh, the indices, right? So that the structure constant P11 zero is K. And now I also should have some P11. But what is the meaning of this P11? If I take any edge in my graph, and if I count how many points I have which are connected to my graph with a new edge, this number should be the same for all edges of the graph, right? So this parameter is called lambda. So once more, this lambda says for any pair of connected points, the number of common neighbors should be the same as lambda. Now we also uh, have this P112 number. What does it mean P112? If I take two points which are related by this one, that means no edge. And I count how many common neighbors there are. It also should be the same. And this parameter is called the mu number, right? And uh, that's actually what we have. The graph here is regular and has two properties. For any for any edge, uh, there are a lot of common neighbors, and for any non-edge, there are new common neighbors. And graph with these properties is called strong irregular graphs. So let me give an example of very, very okay. complete graph, of course, is strong irregular. Right? Any complete graph is strongly regular. Uh, well, you know, k is equal to n minus 1, lambda is equal to uh, n minus 2, and uh, u, k, u, 
actually, uh -huh. we have we have two here. No, to get to this, it's not small area, right? We need a uh, we need non-empty circulation. So let's say. Uh, Okay. So it's regular, k is equal to two. And lambda is equal to zero. And mu is equal to one. This is, uh, you also can take a quadrivium. When k is equal to lambda is zero, but mu is equal to two, this example. But if you change the six down and more, they are not strongly regular graphs anymore. Now the most famous strongly regular graph is the Peterson graph. And let me just make a picture of Peterson graph before we break. You can check that k is equal to 3, lambda is equal to 0, and mu is equal to 1. Yeah. I will talk about this graph later in one of my lectures. So I guess we have a very good Thank you very much. Maybe some comments. If not, uh, we can hear a little bit about bars.